Hello Lurkers, I'm Lauren Stone, the owner and founder of PopLurker.com and you're back for another segment of Pop Lurker Reviews. And today's book that we are going to review is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Before we get started, give this video a big like and subscribe to Pop Lurker on YouTube so you don't miss a single one of our updates. This book's weird. <laughs> and seeing bye. All right, no, um, this book's weird. This book's weird. It was published in 2019, so it's not exactly the freshest of newest, and I'm sure there's other reviews out there for it, but I still want to put in my two cents because I'm the only other Jewish person in the world, and this is about a Jewish character named Miriam, so I need to speak on the book as an authority. It's a mitzvah, really. That's what I'm performing here. It's a mitzvah. I became aware of Naomi Novik when 2016's Uprooted was recommended to me by my best friend. And I loved this book. I mean, like, I loved this book. This isn't the place for the review of Uprooted. Again, now it's not a new book, so I'm sure there's been plenty of reviews about it. If it's requested that I do a review of it, you know, I'm more than happy to. But we're gonna, we're gonna leave this one in the past. This one was basically about a witch and her sorcerer and magic and destiny and a monster in the Polish woods and lots of Slavic stuff that like I'm familiar with and nightmares and fairy tales and it was just this was such a good book and there were like some good parts there like you know the kind that you highlight or bend the pages and come back to later when you need to smile that's in here it was fantastic but this book did not have that and it sucked because I really thought we were gonna get that I wouldn't even compare Spinning Silver and Uprooted except in the fact that like the covers are clearly complementary. Graphic design is the same and it says here on Spinning Silver it says you know by the author of Uprooted. So very obvious they wanted to piggyback the success of Uprooted with Spinning Silver. Spinning Silver also has fairy tale roots as like mo a lot of the stuff I like fairy tales and fantasy guys so a lot of what I read kind of comes from stems from those roots but um, this one had a very original spin on it because they rumple still skin re retelling which I had never seen before and I loved rumple still skin as a kid I used to watch this version starring what was it Amy Irving that was filmed in Israel but it was in English and it was live action and the song that I love, The Miller's Daughter. Like, you know the one I'm talking about. And that was a really cool movie. I love Rumpelstiltskin. Like, the part where, like, the floor opens up and, like, eats the little monster man alive. Like, love Rumpelstiltskin. Straw into gold. All that cool shit. So, when I heard that, uh, that Spinning Silver was a variation on that, basically Miriam, who is the Jewish daughter of a money loaner in this town where most of the people don't like Jews, don't trust those Jewish people, they're trying to take our money back, blah blah blah. Basically her, fa her, her father has overloaned and has not been collecting on their debts, so the family is going broke, mom is sick and Miriam takes matters into her own hands. She puts on her like business pants and she's gonna get all that money back and she's a really good loan collector so she's getting their money back plus the interest her family for the first time in quite a while is doing really well her grandparents on her mother's side um are also you know loan loaners loan officers whatever you want to call it and they've done really well for themselves there's a lot of aspects of jewish culture jewish weddings it's nice to see that representation done in a non-pandering way because there's so much media that either cartoonifies uh, the Jewish experience or completely overlooks it you know we're, vi we're vilified often and I'm not trying to say this like from a victimizing standpoint it's just like we're either cartoons or we're villains um, unless it's something more subtle like part of the reason I'm so drawn to like Judy Bloom's books was because Judaism was just very casual like Here's some characters talking about going to temple, and here's some characters talking about they're not gossiping, they're catching up. And here's some characters, you know, having a nosh of deli foods, and here's some characters, you know, celebrating Hanukkah. Like, it's all very casual and normalized. And so, even though the bulk of this story is about a young Jewish woman who's ostracized, she still gets to have the magic happen to her, which is really, really cool. So, I did like that a lot. 
basically the gist of the story is a snow king what is he specifically called stark the stark king oh, i'm going to show you guys something one second the stark king who is going to now be personified by this dungeons and dragons <laughs> dritz action figure that hasbro sent me last year um, yeah, you know the sword, the White Walker, the Snow Elf King dude. Stark King, girl, my toys away. The Stark King um, comes to Miriam and is basically like, you have so many days to turn this silver into gold because I've heard around town that you have this gift and so you're going to do it or, you know, I'm going to get you. And she does it. Just like in Rumpelstiltskin, she turns straw into gold, and then she does it again. And it's not literal, like, turning straw into gold, but, like, she takes this silver, has it melted down, has it turned into jewelry, has it turned into this, that, and then sells it for the gold. So she's clever. The story is told by the point of view, basically, of three main characters and then their sort of subplot character. It's a little weird. I remember something strange about this story. Like, it started out as a short story or something that Naomi Novik then, like, forced into a full book. But basically just has these kind of perspectives that are odd. So we have the main story, plot, plot line A, with Miriam, straw into gold, um, collecting, being Jewish, all that important stuff. Now we have plot line B, which is basically this tall bulky, ruddy-skinned girl named Wanda with her thick, blonde, awkward pigtails, and she has an abusive father and two younger brothers, and they one of the brothers kills the dad in a fight um, because he's abusing them, and then, they're, then they go live with Miriam's family while Miriam is handling business around town, and they take care of the house and, like, plant the things, and, like, that plot line's okay. I sort of thought we were going to ship... Miriam and Wanda and so I was like oh this is like an unlikely lesbian love story let's go <laughs> and then I started seeing that we are supposed to be cheering for Miriam and the Stark King as a romantic thing and they sort of had that similar snarky banter that Naomi Novik is so fond of writing and she did really well in Uprooted for um, Agnieszka and the dragon Sarkin and that was really like, okay, you know when you're a kid and you're playing dolls and you don't know what romance is yet. And so you have these characters who are yelling at each other and you're like, no, you shut up. No, you shut up. No, you shut up. No, you shut up. I can't stand you. I can't stand you. Uh. <laughs> That's Agnieszka and the dragon, Sarkin. And it's lots of fun, and it's very satisfying. Miriam and the Stark King, and if I'm pronouncing Star Stark, Stark, um, if I'm pronouncing it wrong and I'm bothering you, I'm so sorry. Like, you read it, and you have no one to talk about it with, so we, we go from here. They had that same sort of, no, you shut up, no, you shut up. And, you know, like, it's fun. It's, I like it. Some people, you know, reviewing the books have called it abusive and he's insulting her and it's like this toxic relationship but like I don't think so. You're gonna learn more about me when I do my video entitled Why the Nanny about how much I enjoy those bantery sex you know sexual tension kind of relationships. Back to spinning silver. And then we have plot line C. Plot line C which is about Irina and her old nanny and she's the receiver of the jewelry that Miriam had made as like a sort of dowry and she's going to become the queen and she doesn't love the the prince or the king but then she like does love him and then they like become like this really strong unit and then the weakest chapters are the ones narrated by Irina's nurse and Wanda's youngest brother so we have Wanda chapters her brother Sergei, and then like the little one, like Stefan, if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't even matter. Like the ch the voice doesn't matter, so my opinion doesn't matter. It's weird. It's weird because it's all building, and trust me, I couldn't put this thing down. It's building and it's building and it's building, and then we have a very weak climax, and then we have this final chapter where the Stark King comes back 
asks Miriam to marry him, she basically, like, it has to be a Jewish wedding. They have a chuppah and all. So that'd be a really funny image of, like, this Snow King elf satyr monster man guy. You know, like, with a with a yarmulke, with a kippah, under, like, a chuppah. So, like, there is fun imagery there. But there's this whole segment of the book where Miriam is, like, in the frozen Snow King world, meandering, he's keeping her as sort of a sort of prisoner, and then there's all these opportunities for this developing relationship to be showcased and highlighted and that sexual tension to culminate, and I think we get a kiss at best. I'm not saying that it all has to be sex all the time, Although that's what we got in Uprooted and it was very, very romantic, sexy, and satisfying. And so that was the bar that Naomi Novik had raised. And that was, I don't want to say expectation from her audience because you can write whatever book you want. Like you write, if you're the author, you write the story you want to tell. Nobody can stop you. But if this one was so strong and so good and was so satisfying, what happened in this next story? What happened in Spinning Silver that it just, the writing again was just spectacular. The characters all had these different voices, the sensory writing, the set building, the action, like all these things where so many writers falter and get lost. Naomi Novik doesn't, she really sticks with it and really carries you along. And then she was okay with the end of the book collapsing. And I don't know if it was like a joke on the readers or she really wanted to give us something unexpected, but in the quest for the unexpected, she let it unravel, which, hi, Star Wars, like it happens. So that was just kind of where the story lost me. Like at the end of the book, one I had been invested in, like, non-stop for like four days. I couldn't put it down. I was consuming this story. I was so in this world and I wanted more, 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 more. And then I didn't. So I would give this book Spinning Silver by my, by Naomi Novik. It really gets, gosh, like three out of five lurks. If she had just stuck with plotline A and given us more of that and made the, and not changed points of view all the time and not made it like Wanda's story and Arena's story were like so imperative but still kind of told these tales from Miriam's perspective and just kept it following Miriam and what that what these different relationships meant for her journey this easily could have been a four and a half or even a five out of five book with a little bit of release tension and a shift in perspective and having everything kind of mean a little more, this would have been a five out of five. But by the end, when we were just kind of plotting and meandering and the characters that we really wanted to see that release tension and everything that we've read up to this point mean more and it didn't, yeah, we're at, we're at three out of five lurks for sure. Um, I don't think I have any highlighted reread passages here like I do with Uprooted. Although I'm going to reread this, I will read it again. Um, it's not, there's, yeah, I don't go back to it for that like escapism of a sensuous world the way I do with Uprooted. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I'm Lauren Stone with poplurker.com. Stick with our site for all sorts of evergreen content. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Always love what you love and never stop lurking. I'll catch you for the next one. Bye.